One of our standard electrodes is the silver and silver chloride electrode. What we're seeing here is our usual way of sketching things where we've drawn it with beakers and wires and things. So we'll do this to start out with, and then we'll actually take a look at what it would look like in practice. So for the moment, I'd like you to go ahead and pause the video and draw the line notation for this half cell. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Remember we start out from the wire. First thing we encounter that's involved in the electrochemical reaction would be our silver. So we'll have Ag solid. Then we'll have our bar. Now notice that on that we've got that silver chloride paste sitting there. It's actually going to be a solid. We say it's a paste, but that just means that it's you know in something goopy enough to make the grains of silver chloride stick. So we'll have AgCl solid. Now that shouldn't be surprising. We know silver is typically a plus one cation, very rarely anything else. Chloride is a negative one, and so we'll have a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. We'll have our bar showing the next state of matter change. And then when we look around it, around there we're going to have a KCl solution that's aqueous. And as drawn there, we can even specify that the concentration is just saturated. Or, if it's not saturated, we'd omit that part right there. And you will find that you can do this with an E0 for the system of 0.222 volts positive. And that's going to be for the unsaturated scenario. And of course, when we plug that in the Nernst equation, we're going to be constantly updating our actual voltage based on whatever we have in our solution and the equilibrium that it's giving us, or rather the uh, Q that it's giving us. However, we don't usually want that to change. We want to be able to work with something that's standard and acts the same throughout our experiment under all conditions. So what we'll usually do is we'll saturate that side's electrode with KCl, and that will end up giving us a potential of 0.197 volts positive. Now, the one thing I was omitting over here, I need a salt bridge to connect that to whatever my other half cell would be. So that's how we would go through our whole silver silver chloride electrode using our normal notations, our beaker diagram we'll call this, and our line notation. But let's see what that actually looks like experimentally. Now here's what it would look like with actual hardware most of the time. And you'll notice that this piece over here looks an awful lot like one of those pH probes we use in the lab. And that's basically the idea of it. We want to be able to put this half cell just directly into a solution that we want to measure like you see done right here, have everything else in the solution. And what we can do is if we have a little salt bridge right there at the tip, so there's our salt bridge, we've got our half cell in effectively one beaker, and in the other beaker we'll have everything else that's going on. So this is a really nice and easy to use setup. So you can see here we're going to have an air inlet that's open. The reason we always have to make sure we open the air inlet on any of the probes that we use we need to allow a tiny amount of the fluid to actually pour through the salt bridge if needed. So we've got to make sure we take that off. Otherwise, the back pressure that we get from the draining, creating a small vacuum here, is going to slow down the flow and it's going to end up really uh, messing up our measurements. So then what we have is we have our saturation stuff. We have some KCl and some extra silver, silver chloride, and some extra silver chloride here. Now, Here's the part that matters for our notation. This is just to make sure that there's no way that any of this comes off. We've got this area so concentrated and so maxed out at its solubility threshold that if in a single moment we have too much, it's going to precipitate down here with all this massive surface area. If we end up having any DI that we had to put in or something like that, this is what's going to uh, dissolve and it's going to mostly leave this paste alone. So we're going to protect our electrode surface. Now here we have that paste around our silver wire. It's going to be bent into a loop to actually support that goop. And then we have it connect to the other side. Then when you see it over here, of course, whether it's anode or cathode would depend on what the other half cell is and what its potential would be. But you can see that this is the basic idea of our reference electrode for the silver-silver chloride setup. 